check this out, man. The yellow came out great. I can't wait to start sewing this thing together. Still a lot to do. I at least want to sew the shoulder string on the tunic so I can at least halfway wear it. I still need to do the edging. Lots going on, but man, I just I love the color. I like it. Just it came out perfect. I like the texture. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that texture, but it's kind of like almost an upholstery texture. I just really like it. My task right now is legs. I'm wearing my karate pants right now. I don't know if you can see that. You can't. That's okay. I'll show you that. So I'm wearing my karate pants, man. I got these things going on. I'm going to figure out the leg armor. There are some wraps around the knees that are yellow. And I've got this yellow cloth that I dyed. So I need to figure out how I'm going to attach that. I'm guessing Velcro on each end to secure it to my knee. Kind of need to hem the edge because otherwise it looks all raggedy and messed up. And I prefer it not look like that. The leg armor. You know, the leg armor looks a little bit tall to me. I mean, I know where these pieces join. Uh, the rope that attaches the front to back. I mean, I'm not gonna, my rope's not really gonna attach anything, it's just for looks, but the rope goes above this ledge and under this lip. So these fit here, but you can see there's a lot of material on the bottom side. So I need to figure out how it's gonna work. So I'm not recutting this. These are how they are gonna be. So I may end up just cutting the bottom off that. I may see if I can curve it over my foot. You have to look at my reference photos as well. Uh, probably will attach these just with some poly webbing from the front to back, just contact cemented to both. And then one side, one end will be Velcro, so I can just take them off. But now I want one side completely contact cemented so I don't have to Velcro both sides. Only one side. I try to reduce the number of buckles and attachments and all these points to make things really simple when I'm putting these costumes on because otherwise it would take forever. So that is the task. Let's do it. So there's the knee wrap. There's a couple different ways I could do this. If it's a little bit longer, I might could try to button it back up together. It's just not quite long enough. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if I put, if I but put the button down, it's gonna want to pull it down. Uh, I thought about maybe just slicing it, and you know, you'd have to be very creative how you slice it so you have a little bit of overlap. So you just Velcro it together. I thought I was gonna hem these edges so you get a nice clean edge. I thought, well, maybe not. Looking at it, I think I probably will. Uh, but you know, I want to get just a very little bit because the the bigger the material on the back, that's the less wide the strip is, and I want to maximize the strip. Uh, and so I think I'm gonna sew it. I thought maybe just trim these edges and leaving it. I st I'm undecided. Right now I'm thinking Velcro, and for the Velcro you want a kind of long piece of it, because if you go short, well you know if you're a little short or a little long, you might miss your mark. With the longer pieces on both sides, you know a couple inches, you can be a little short or a little long, you're still gonna get enough grip to hold these things on. Uh, this thing, I mean it hits about mid-knee. This is my kneecap right here. It's hitting about mid-knee, the armor goes down from there. Uh, yeah, I don't know, you know if I trim this it'd look better. I mean these strings certainly look bad. But if I hemmed it and had a nice clean edge, I think it would look way better, kind of the way it's intended. This is what it looks like, I and mean, I think that looks very close to the reference photo. The armor comes down from there, I need to figure that out. So the armor, like overall, it kind of hits my foot right here where it needs to be. It hits the knee about the right spot. I need to shape these lower parts a little bit more. That's hitting in a good spot. And the knee is perfect, it's just this gets a little wide, so I need to keep this, and it might be when I get the bindings on, it might help pull it in a little bit. Just It just looks way too wide. It looks like some giant boot. I think now I need to get to this leg armor and figure out how the back is going to match up, because that I don't quite know. I wish this thing was a little bit longer. I mean, there is the heel armor, so I guess it's okay. But I'd love for it to overlap the shoe a little bit, but maybe it's better if it doesn't, just so I have that full range of movement. If I over, movement, if I overlap the shoe, it, it might bind up, but that's not bad. A lot of time I have to wear some taller socks, but that works. I, just, I need something to help tuck that. I may need to trim this. I mean, I just, I have a little more leg. I have more armor than leg. So I think I'm gonna have to just trim that right down, just making a line. So I can trim these things, I just can't add to them. That is kind of the tricky part. And again, like this dictates, that rope goes right there. And that rope is probably gonna be Velcro. I'm probably gonna, you know, I mean, I pretty much could glue it on this side and just work on one side. I only need an opening on one side of it, not both sides. There's going to be polyweb. I'm just going to, I don't know, maybe two spots if I can get away with it. I do need to turn the back. I need to look at how I need to turn that. Can you see that line? It needs to come right around in there. Probably use tape to hold this to my leg. Bring this out. All right, I'm going to get to work trying to clean these things up. This rope's a little chewed up from the dyeing and stirring. You see, it's, you see how tight these coils are? And how they're a lot looser here. What I did, I kind of put hot glue in strategic spots and twist it so it try to take shape a little bit. You can see probably needs a bit of hot glue right there. And that's been putting a dab right in there just a little bit. 
and then just twisting it you can see I got a little bit of glue there wipe it it is hot so you want to spread it around really quick before it burns you because it gets quite hot and if you spread it around it will not burn it'll dissipate the heat because surface area more surface area the quicker it can dissipate heat so I was doing that to try and hold the shape I mean it's not perfect and it's not as tight as this I probably should have glued it or taped it before I dyed it I just didn't think about it but at least this way it kind of holds in I mean it was spraying all the way in it looks a little bit better I uh, need to figure out how I'm going to finish it that might solve some of the issue because I'm thinking maybe Velcro or something. I mean, I don't want to have to tie it every time. I like to just stick it, and Velcro might be it. But again, you're not going to be able to get a lot of Velcro on that small bit of rope. But I did that to all the ends. This rope was not quite as frayed, so it came out a little bit better. So I had to trim my leg armor. It just was a little bit too wide. You can see that is kind of the raw cut. It's hard to get a nice, smooth edge when you're cutting it. The sharper the razor blade, the better it will come out. But I just put it on the belt sander, round it off a little bit. Looks much better. I will need to heat treat this. But I had to, I did have to trim the front and back. I tried to even out how much I trimmed it so the sides were kind of midline down my leg. And that's how we got here. All right, the leg armor is clamshelled. So basically all I did, you can see I've got the polyflex, or not polyflex, polyweb contact cement on both sides of the foam. On the polyweb, I sprayed, and it sprayed, sprayed adhesive first just so the contact cement won't soak all the way through. Then you attach the polyweb. I just did about two inches on each side. This gives you a little bit of flex up and down, a little bit of adjustability, and it'll wrap very easy. On the other side, this is contact cement, and it's just sticky Velcro attached to it. Same here, poly contact cement on the foam and then the Velcro. And so basically it folds over, and this gives you a little bit of adjustability. You know, you can you pull it as kind of tight as you want on that side. Uh, that is it, man. That's the leg armor. It is looking good. I'm very pleased with it. Still need to figure out how the armor is going to fit on my shoe. Because you've got the heel and this toe piece. And I don't want to glue it to the shoe or attach to the shoe. I mean, across the laces, I think this is just going to work its way loose. So my current thought is that I may just attach some elastic from the heel to the toe. And then run it underneath the shoe and criss crisscross it under the shoe. Kind of like a spat, stirrup type thing. That's my current plan. Don't know if I have any black elastic. I need to look into that. Builder's Law 2021, October. So I'm sewing up the hood. Pleats are difficult. I really hope they meet in the back. I mean, I've measured, I've tried to line everything up, but I'm not great at sewing. You know, it's kind of, I just start and hope it all works out. Here's where we are as far as the pleats go. I've got them lined. I mean, I've tried to line them up. It's just difficult. And then plus I have this red lining. I'm sewing a lot of stuff together. The hood, if it comes out even halfway right, it's going to look awesome with that red lining and the skull mask. So we're going to see how it goes. I'm going to iron this out. You can see that it's very wrinkled from when it was wet and dried out. I'm going to iron it try and hope. I'm going to iron it to try and hold these pleats in place just because they want to kind of unwrinkle because that's cost natural tendency. So I've got an iron. I'm going to do all that. You can see the iron in the background. And then I'm just going to sew it. And I don't know a lot about sewing. You know, I'm always open to tips. If you have them, please share them. But I'm just going to sew the red lining uh, kind of around the outside. Eventually, I'll have to do a, I don't know, you know, kind of inside out seam here. And then uh, the front, I'll just fold in and sew it. I don't know. I mean, uh, usually you sew things inside out, and I guess I could sew them inside out here. I'm going to think about that. Because I guess I could. I guess I could sew it inside out, and I'll still have the bottom where I could pull it out. That way, I would clean up all these seams. I have to think about that. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'm, I've done a lot of sewing, but I'm just figuring out as I go along. One thing I like about sewing is that I'm prone to screwing up, and it's very easy to just cut the stitches and redo it. Here's my hood in progress. I've not sewn the inner lining together. Uh, I did finally figure out like a method that made sense to me on how to sew it. And basically what I did, I sewed the front edges first, connecting the red to the black. Did it inside out, and just did a stitch the way down. And then I did the back, just the black to itself. And so I'll turn it all inside out so the red to itself, so the red and the black lining will be separate. But I'm liking it. The only catch is you can see my pleats. They are not staying in place. I'm going to have to run a stitch on the inside just to kind of keep those things in place. I don't know if I'm going to run all the way down. I might just so the stitch is as tight. But you can see the pleats just want to stretch right back out. I ironed them down, and they, they just don't want to stay in place. Uh, when I first started this, I started at the top. I went back. Well, when I got to the pleats, I realized they did not line up in the back. Of course, so I... Uh, Cut the stitches all the way back and made sure they lined up. And they don't line up completely perfect, but before they were about half an inch off. Now they're about eighth of an inch. And I'll take that. I really don't think my skills can warrant me doing much better, but 
Man, I'm really liking it. You know, just that red on the inside looks pretty mean. So you give a little test run on this. Oh yeah, man. That's looking cool. Now actually I got a little bit of work to do when I take this line and sewn in, but I mean that hood, man, it looks the shape, it looks good. And I still have a lot to do. There's like a little piece that goes around the neck. I don't know what that's called. Uh, you know, I'll iron this this right. Yeah, the pleats, I'm gonna have to show those, they just don't stay in place. But once I get my mask in, I like this thing. This came out really nice. The colors, the black, everything. I mean, I had some issues dyeing the fabric. I had issues with everything, but it's fine for looking good. And, but man, these pleats, I was hoping they would stay in place, but they don't, so. Man, you can see, you can see where my creases run. So I'll just fold that on the inside. I'll just run a stitch down it, and that way I hold it in place so it doesn't want to pull out. But soon, soon I'll have this thing going. This costume has come together. Up next will probably be the undershirt. Uh, I still need to do the mask and the whole helmet thing, but I wanted to get this hood done. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to my cave. I don't know. Man, the hood is done. I'm really liking it. It came out really nice. Few little small issues with it, but overall it looks really nice. I was wondering about whether I needed to put some plastic in here, but I did a stitch all around the perimeter, and that is helping it keep its shape a lot better. I did that basically for a couple reasons. For one, I wanted the black to kind of have a little bit of an inside edge to it, and without a stitch there, I just wanted to, you know, just it wouldn't hold in place. So I did that stitch, one, to hold it in place. Two, the reference it actually has, it has a piece of stripping, piece of cloth going around the perimeter. The belt, the the pleats actually don't come all the way to the edge. There's a strip, like a one inch strip that goes all around the perimeter. Well, I'm way too far into this before I realized that. My sketches didn't have that. I just I missed it. That's okay though. So this stitch, it kind of mimics that, but it holds everything in place. I and mean, I just, I like this thing a lot. I and mean, I got it attached to everything else, but it is exactly how I thought it would be. I mean, I still wonder if I need to add a little bit of plastic or something on the inside just to help keep this open. I don't want it kind of drooping over my face or anything. I want it to kind of extend out. But, you know, I think once I get the neck piece in, it might be okay. I don't know. When I got the helmet here, that'll take a little bit of space. That'll have to figure out later. Uh, yeah, it takes a little bit to get it right in place. But I like the red lining. It just it came out really well. The, I did sew my pleats just because they did not want to stay in place. So now I don't know if I like, put a piece, like a piece of wire around the perimeter. Maybe plastic around the perimeter. I was thinking maybe something out. But then you're going to kind of see it in there. I think it just needs to be just around the perimeter. So I can keep this a hoop shape. That's all I need. Like this right here, if I can keep that shape, it's good to go. I don't know how much space the mask will take up. I don't think it'll take up much, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Uh, Cause I also have to figure out how much to trim off because there's the neck piece that goes in. But this is the hood. I am loving it. Came out really well. You know, I got two weeks. Well, I got less than two weeks. So I really got to run and get this. And stuff like this kind of gives me that motivation. I was having all those issues, things not going right. So when something like this comes out and it looks Pretty good. I mean, again, there's a few issues overall. I really dig it. I mean, it looks it looks good. Pleats get a little weird in the back. I don't know how to combat that. I mean, probably should be doing these completely, completely different. Probably should have sewn them to begin with. And that might have fixed everything, but I thought they'd stay in place. I don't know, man. A little test fit of where we are. I mean, this tabard still a long ways to go, but I still need to buy my face. I still I had to try it on. I had to check it out. It's looking good. I'm liking it, man. I, I love the kind of red outlining this skull I think it's gonna look really awesome I just I love the skull much more than like you know any human looking thing I could have done. I mean this skull is gonna look awesome you know just just a look I need to you know still a lot of work to do on this thing a lot of ways to go but it's getting there put some shoulder armor on here I'm liking it I mean it's making progress it's gonna look like a thing a lot of little details to it I got less than two weeks to do them all. I have no idea how I did this. It really always happens that somehow I twisted the sides. I twisted one side as I was putting this together so that it's just there's a twist in it. So it's not an, an, I don't know how I did it, but I have to rip this seam that I just did to fix it. Uh, the seam I actually just did was along the side, but that's a much longer seam. I was looking for the shortest seam I could rip to redo this, but as you can see that it was sewn like this, it, there's a twist in it, so I needed to undo it so I could untwist it, and I'll just sew it right back. But, you know, like I said, I'm not great at sewing, so invariably this always happens that I always will have to rip a seam, rip a seam and redo it. And luckily, with material it is not that difficult to rip it and just do it over and get it right 
But this is the undershirt. I mean, it's looking pretty good. I was pretty pleased with it. I was surprised I'd not screwed up a seam earlier than this. I mean, I'd gotten almost to the whole thing. I just need to sew the front to kind of this shoulder piece and the shoulder piece to the back. Still have the sleeves to do, but I'll be able to try it on soon and make sure it's somewhat in the range. Hopefully it's in the neighborhood. Check it out. I've got this shirt yeah, in a state that I can try it on. I don't have the sleeves because I want to do a diamond pattern on the sleeves, so I need to do a lot more sewing for that. But uh, yeah, you know, it's designed where the it comes across just like kind of reference photo. Uh, the tabard's going to come down so you're not really going to see these lines. I've got the stripes underneath the arms. I mean, this came out really well. I mean, check this thing out. I'm very pleased with this. I can't believe it came out as well as it did. I don't quite know how I'm going to attach it. I'm thinking maybe just buttons will do it. But yeah, man, this looks... The, Man, I just can't believe it came out so well. I mean, I had a good reference that I was using that shirt as a pattern. Uh, it does want to kind of curve, like the, the tail of it wants to curve this way. That might be how I cut it. Uh, I don't know. But, because I think this piece, I think both pieces curve down, which is perfectly fine. But yeah, I mean, this, the color, the, the way this thing fits me, once I get the sleeves on this thing, this will be awesome. I just need to figure out the button situation. I think buttons are it. I mean, anything else is just going to be a little bit more trouble than that. I do need to figure out the collar. I mean, you can see I need to trim the collar a little bit. It does need, I mean, I might just fold it in to hem it. Haven't figured that out yet. I don't want to take too much away because it's not a super loose fit. I mean, you see it folds over. So I think just a nice tight hem just so I have a finished edge there. In the reference photo, it does kind of have a band going around. Uh, if I do that, I'll just fake it and do like a hem it real close and then just do a wider stitch just to make it look like there's a band going because I don't have any more red material. I'm not going to dye more red material this is what it is man i just i'm really pleased how this came out i was really expecting for me to try it on and you know not come out at all because again i'm not a professional sewing but this it works I'm just kind of looking for reference how all this is going to fit together and this thing is going to come across now you can see i got a little bit area here but there is the the hood comes down and there's a kind of black piece that comes all the way around so i really think you're probably just going to see just this bit maybe not even that I mean, you will see the armpits, and that's fine, because I'm going to have that. That is covered. I mean, I love that stripe of red. Uh, so, yeah, man, I'm really liking this. I mean, and it looks like in the reference photos, the G is just all one piece red. But I just wanted the black and the red. I want a little bit of contrast from that yellow to see. You know, I just want to be a little cooler. I mean, I always dress up my costumes to kind of fit what I want and what I think. And that's one of the, I just thought it would be a cool accent, the black to the red. All right. Man, it is coming together. It's starting to look like a thing. I mean, still a ton to go. I've yet to finish even one single piece of anything. I was thinking the belt would be the first thing I finished, but that leather dyeing fiasco was what a mess. And I'm, so I need to recut all the leather for that so I can re dye it because what I dyed, it didn't take the dye at all. I mean, if it taken the dye even halfway, I think, all right, I can just re dye it. You know, now I'm using heat on a stove, but it didn't take the dye at all. I don't know what was on that thing. I scrubbed it hard with acetone. I mean, to a larger degree than anything else I've died, and it just didn't work. But, making progress. Next, the, the sleeves. So the sleeves, I just want a diamond crisscross pattern. I just want another texture on here. I just think like plain black sleeves are just kind of boring. Uh, on the Mandalorian, I did, there were some patterns like crisscross. There's white stitching on black. It looked really sharp, and that's why I want to do this. I'm gonna do it from the top all the way down. My arm armor's gonna come up to about right here. I think it's gonna be a cool texture, just some little added little thing to this costume. I just like the way it looks, man. The diamond stitching looks really cool. So I'm going to put out the Mandalorian and kind of see how I did that. I mean, I think I just marked it out with chalk. Memory starts me. Because also, I don't know if it matters, like, how straight it is. You know, I'd like for it to kind of follow the arm. But I'm going to do this off of, I'm going to do the sleeves off of the shirt. So I, I don't quite know how it's all going to work together once it's done. I guess that's something I'll find out. So we'll just go with it and hope it works out well. So this is not strictly adhered to my reference material, but I just want to do a diamond pattern on the sleeve. I mean, the reference photos don't have a sleeve. I want sleeves on this just because my arms aren't big and buff like Scorpion. So I'm going to do, I'm going to start just doing horizontal lines from this orientation down the sleeve one inch apart with white thread. And then I'm going to come back and do kind of a triangle diamond pattern all the way down. I don't know if I have to go all the way down the sleeve because there's armor that, you know, will come up to about my elbow. So I really just need just kind of the bicep, tricep area of the sleeve with the diamond pattern. So I don't know. I'll probably just run to it down to about right here see how it goes and when i did the mandalorian i wanted to be very exact with those lines so i chalked the lines to make sure everything was straight i don't feel like doing all the chalk it's just i don't want to so yes i'm getting lazy yes that may mean my lines are a little wavy but i'm feeling good i think i can make the lines relatively straight we will soon find out i might can you know just run a piece of tape across it or something uh i mean but once you get going straight it, you can pretty much go the whole way it's just kind of getting started that's the tough part 
So I do have to go all the way around the sleeve, which will, you know, makes it a little tougher, but I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm just gonna wing it. And really, you know, if I just keep moving, you'll never be able to tell if it's wavy or not. So that may be my, what I have to do. Check this out, I'm getting some pretty good lines here. Uh, so the trick of what I, how I did this is that first, I just, I started right here on that peak, on that corner, and I just tried to hit the other corner. And you see, I didn't do a perfect job, but that just helped me maintain a straight line. So from there, I'm just adding lines above and below that. You can see on my sewing machine, that tape, that edge is kind of the edge I'm using as a guide so that when I add lines on either side of the main line, well, I've got a guide to where I kind of know where to hit it. So, and those lines are coming out pretty straight. So I think the process is working. Now, doing the diamonds crisscross, and that's going to be something. Barbara's looking at this and thinking, can I just leave it as the horizontal lines? I mean, that looks pretty good. Do I really need diamonds? Uh, I'll have to see. But I definitely like adding the horizontal lines. And what I do with diamonds, I don't know, because not adding them would make things a whole lot easier. Check it out. I've got sleeves. If you're eagle eyed, you can tell they're not actually attached to the shirt. I just wanted to kind of see what they look like. I did do a diamond pattern in them. Uh, I did the horizontal lines. I thought, should I just leave the horizontal lines? I want to go to all the trouble. And I figured I did. And I really like the diamonds. I really just wish, I thought about doing crossing both ways where it'd be a bunch of triangles. So I wish I had done my diamonds instead of like horizontal and vertical. But I kind of dig the horizontal look, man. This thing looks really good. I did not take the sleeves all the way down because I have arm armor. And in the reference photos, there's like a yellow sleeve. It's very loose fitting. I don't like it. I almost want, wonder if I do a wrap. I don't have any more yellows. So I'd have to figure that out. Uh, I would like to do something. I don't know. But man, these sleeves are awesome. I just need to attach them to the jacket, the shirt. But it's looking good. This thing is really coming together. I just need to you know, add some buttons. But I mean, man, I, I might have to wear this out and about around town. This thing is looking slick, looking good. So yeah, it's, so these sleeves, I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. But uh. All this is is just, is just stitching across. I just used uh, I used tape on the sewing machine just kind of act as a guide where I kind of does my line so I sew it through. I did leave the far, the I didn't do any diamonds at the very top just because I knew the shoulder arm would completely cover it. And really, you're only going to see from here to here. Uh, and then send the sleeve. You just turn it inside out, sew it down the edge, flip it back inside out. And we're good to go. I mean, you can see my stitching is not beautiful on the inside of the arm. I don't care. Nobody's really going to see that. I mean, Scorpion didn't raise his arms. He's got them fists ready to go. Yeah, I'm liking this thing. I still need to hem around the neck. And the neck is a little tight, so I might need to cut it out just make it a little bit wider. I don't quite know yet. Uh, that may work itself out as I hem it. All in all, we've made great progress, man. It's looking more and more like Scorpion. I don't know what I'm going to tackle next. Maybe the half mask. I definitely need to do that. There's still a lot of little things. I probably need to paint all my armor. I think that is ready to paint. Figure out how the shoulder armor fits together. I mean, am I ready for a test fit? I think I'm very close. There's just a lot of disparate pieces that don't actually attach, but are close to doing it. I may try to attach my sleeves tonight, when I think this thing is ready to go. A uh, few things you can do if the foam pieces just don't want to conform to the shape you've made them in, and they want to go back to flat. Get cut a thin piece of foam like this, kind of hold it in the curve you want it to be, and then contact cement it in place. This, I mean, you look at this, this does not want to go back to flat because this piece is just kind of holding it in place. So I've done that on my shoulder pauldrons. I've done that on the leg armor right at the ankle. I need it kind of a tighter shape and it didn't want to conform. So I glued in a piece of foam that is holding it in a nice tight shape. So that's just something you can do. I mean, you can cut, there's a lot of different things you can do. You know, I've, I'll cut it for different angles, you know, to get different shapes. But something like this, sometimes that's just easier to just glue in a backing piece of foam to help it keep shape. I've heat treated these things. I've taped off where I don't want paint. Next up is the Plasti Dip. And I'm going to give that a day to dry. Then I'm going to paint it silver. Give that another day. Then I can start wetting it and get it darker. I've already punched all my holes for any of the rivets, anything like that. These things are all set, man. I just need to get them painting because I've got a week to go. Here is the setup before I begin the Plasti Dip process. I got everything laid out. I mean, I will be wearing gloves. I'm not right now, but I will be. And I'm going to, you know, I'll pick it up, paint it, sit it back down. Uh, I'm only gonna have this on a riser because I'm just, I don't want these bottom edges hitting the table and messing up that finish. Everything else, it's kind of sitting in the back corner, back edge. I'm not really too concerned about it. With those shoulder patterns, I just feel like you might see that bottom edge a little bit. Everything has been heat treated with a heat gun. It's set. Now I will have to punch some holes in the shoulder patterns for the leather straps that come across. I haven't done that yet. I'm just gonna wait on that because I don't want to delay the paint anymore. It's a good time, good place. We're ready to go on that. So next step is paint. 
So I'm using foam for the half mask. This is how I cut it. This is the result. I mean, I wish it wasn't quite so pointed. With a little bit of heat, I might can flatten that out a little bit. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm not loving the mask so far. It's just, it's very pointed as far as kind of the nose and chain go. Not sure I can fix that. It is what it is. I've taken a break on that. These are my little towels that go around the belt. I thought about how to do this. I thought about maybe some contact cement on the back. For right now, I'm just doing duct tape because this black... For some reason, the black has shrank quite a bit. I've had to pull it and stretch it to get everything to kind of meet up. I mean, look at that. That looks pretty decent. You can tell. I don't know if you can quite see through the camera. You can see it's a little wavy because I have tried to pull and stretch this to get it to fit. The crazy thing is, all these things came from the same thing. And I guess maybe the difference is that, you know, this I uh, re-dyed in hotter water. And maybe that caused it to shrink more. I'm not quite sure. It all was cut from the same piece of leather. But it, uh, yeah, it's been a little weird. But, I mean, overall, I'm liking how it's coming out. Duct tape is not super permanent, but I just don't know if I could use contact cement because I'm not, I think, trying to stretch it and get it to meet up would create a bit of an issue. So I'm just going to hope this works. This is, I mean, maybe I go back over it, maybe, like, just some straps along this. I don't know. Uh, I just, I don't think I can do it with contact cement. I'm not sure I can get it to stretch and fit everything in place in one go because some of these things I've had to tape and retape and redo just to try and get everything to meet up. I mean, some of these, let's see if we can kind of gap. You see, this gap is a little loose. That's one of my looser gaps. Uh, let's see, there's that one. That's a little loose. Yeah, that one, that one you can actually see the tape behind it. And it's just tough. I mean, this thing, it doesn't quite match up right, which I was hoping it would, which is why I did it all in one piece. If I had to do it again, would I do it differently? Maybe, maybe not. The skull, I've glued more pieces in there. That is starting to be filled in. I need to get the sunglasses in there. Uh, figure all that out but it is coming together i mean i've got lots of stuff all over the place here's all the leather i dyed this is going to be the collar around the tavern you can see for some reason this leather is very spotty i don't really mind i kind of like that it'll give a weathered look to the tavern this is the belt it's gonna be very black uh i mean that died super well and that is the same cut of leather as these for some reason these look a little more faded don't know why that's okay too but it's coming together that's where we're at right now it's nighttime. I've just sprayed these pieces with nice bright silver. Now what I do just to make these things a little more realistic is that I hit it out of with silver. I mix it with black, brown, and white. Really I use whatever colors I have on hand. Usually some variation of black or gray, something dark, something white, and then brown just with a little bit of dirt. And it just gives it a modeled, gives it a model so you can kind of see a little bit of that modeling on there. I mean that's a place where I actually didn't spray too much black. Had to wipe it off real quick. I actually don't mind that, you know, it gives it a little bit of this interesting look, it gives it a little story. But you can see, you can see a little bit of spotting here with what that does. It just gives it a little bit of texture, it makes it look a little more interesting because otherwise if it's just this silver single color, it just looks like a toy because toys are always these very simple plain colors. And this neat, just gives it, makes it a little bit more realistic, it gives it a little bit of a dirty look. So we're really getting down to crunch time, I'm working on the mask. I really, I'm not all that happy with it, uh, it's a bit too peaked. It is what it is. I've just got to make progress. I don't have time to try to figure out because I don't exactly know how to fix that. So I'm working on the nose holes, as you can see, looking a little ragged. So what I'm going to try to do is see if I can just hole punch the bottom and the top, and then that way I can just cut a straight line to help the circles meet because it's difficult to cut a circle with a razor blade. And as you can see, it's just getting a bit jagged. I mean, this one's a little bit better. This one's a little rough. Let's see if we can do it that way because I'd like at least some clean holes here. Uh, I'm trying to make the best of this thing. I know this mask, even if it's not great, even if it's not perfect. If it's yellow, most people aren't going to know. They're not going to be as you know, critical as I am and look at all these details. So I'm really I'm just trying to push forward and get good enough. I am modifying anyway, so it's going to look a little bit different from what most people know. But I really I don't think most people are going to get past the ta the yellow tabard, all the armor, and the hood, the skull mask. There's a lot of other things going on, so that's going to be in my benefit. It's too peaked, man. I don't I don't know. I probably just I made one seam in the middle. I did this a couple different ways trying to template it. This is what I came up with. Not that it's bad, it's just not quite what I want. I've got my skull all fused together. I used my awesome plastic or wood burning tool. I've used it to mount everything but wood. But I've fused everything together. I mean, I don't know if it's the cleanest job. I hope when I paint it, everything will kind of blend in or look like, you know, just kind of like a seam like this. It's a natural seam in the skull. I think it's going to be better than a bunch of seams. Uh, I think it'll be better than a bunch of cracks. Don't have gray. I have this tan. It's a light tan. I'm going to mist it with black to hopefully kind of make it look a little more gray. I think skulls naturally are more kind of a tannish than this grayish color that we typically see. Now the eyes, I'm going to do around the eyes a gloss black because the sunglasses I have are more glossy. And that way I'm hoping it'll kind of blend together from the 
eye socket to the glasses. So just, I mean, the glasses look awesome. They look like this endless hole, this endless pit. I love that. So hopefully I'll blend everything together. But this thing, it's, everything has come together. I'm painting a bunch of stuff, getting closer. Here's all my armor over here. That looks really nice. And you can see the difference where I missed it, where I didn't miss it. And it gives, it gives a subtle difference. That, I actually like that. That's where I accidentally, my sleeve, I think my sleeve got it. And I was trying to rub, no, no, I accidentally sprayed it black. Really had right there, so I was rubbing it off. And I kind of like the look that gives. It just gives it something unique. It's going to glue all the leather to those, but here's where we are. This is my skull, fresh after paint. So I did do the tan. I missed it with the black. As you can tell, I got a little heavy on the black, so I just used my gloved finger to kind of wipe it down. It gives a nice kind of marbled effect. I mean, I left some spray in a couple places. I like for these things to look a little bit messy. So for the eyes, that is gloss black. I just cut a hole in the paper and did a quick mask. And then just use a rag kind of around the edges to wipe it down. Again, like real messy, just real loose. And that kind of gives it just a, a cra bit of a crazy look, a bit of a wild look. So once I get those glasses in there, the gloss black and the gloss black can blend into them pretty well. So time is getting short. We are rolling through this. I put the leather on the pauldrons. I just did contact cement on the foam. I just did spray glue on the leather. Good hold. I hot glued the sunglasses lens into the skull. I just went... I went all the way around trying to get a little bit kind of over the edge of the thing to hold it in. I mean, it seems pretty solid. I wouldn't, you know, take it anywhere where I'd see a lot of damage or use. So, you know, you can't quite see how good it looks when I mean, you can see through it in this angle. But when you have something behind it, you can kind of go. I mean, it looks really dark, really nice. Right now, I'm putting the rivets into the armor. I did not realize how many rivets it is. It's 48 rivets. I just, just I wish I'd done, like, just a single in each of these spots instead of two. I mean, I guess it's accurate, but it is a lot. Um, so I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm putting just a dab of contact cement right around the edge because if you put too much, you're going to get it splay out when you push it in. And I'm just, I'm putting it right on. So for these rivets, basically, all you do, I just took it. If you just hit it, it'll knock out the actual rivet. Well, I was using a pair of pliers. I'll show you that. So for the rivets, I'm just taking a pair of pliers, pulling out the rod. So I'm putting just a bit of contact cement on the end. Because uh, you put it all the way down the body of the rivet, it's just going to create a mess when you push it into the hole. And I've got it on the rivet stud, just so I don't get glue on me. And this is how you do it. Just push it in there. It's a little difficult, one-handed. <laughs> so it is in there. This pulls right out. Good, clean rivet in there. Yeah, the rivets just give it a nice look to it, a little bit more realistic.